Welcome back to Meet the Ministers. My guest on the program this evening is the member for Mogul, Bruce Flegg. The whole situation in the LNP with the merging of the two partners, the, the two parties, you've been the leader. Um, you've been right smack dab in the middle of the whole process as the rest of, the, of Queensland has watched it going on. Has it been an enjoyable process for you? I mean, I guess you can't enjoy everything and there's certainly mm. been ups and downs. You have a smile on your face. You, yes. seem, you seem pretty happy with the way life is going at the moment. Yes. You take that on board and you kind of have to roll with the punches, don't you? People often say, do you enjoy this? And I, my, my standard answer is probably not the right word. Um, I mean, it's a fascinating and important thing to yeah. be doing. Um, look, I think the, in relation to the merger of, of the parties, which uh, no, no such momentous change after 50 years. Nobody knew how it was going to go um, down. That's right. Yeah. However, I think it had become obvious that uh, if we were going to be fit to be considered as an alternative government, that it was never going to happen while we had two separate competing parties. And, um, you know, you've got to take your hat off to those that could think outside the square and make it happen. I mean, in those, you know, the, the lowest days for the, for the coalition, it really was, well, where are we going to do now? How can we possibly ever get back into the government? The, the, yeah. the Biddy government's dominance was so great at that stage. Mm. The, the ability to come up, like you say, and, and think outside the square and I say, how do we turn this around? Mm. Was there a, a blueprint in place at that stage or is it something that's been altered as you go? Oh, I think it's evolved, yeah. uh, like uh, all these sort of things do. I mean, You can't really anticipate the way we've things We've had a Liberal and, and National Party since uh, uh, the 1940s uh, here, so it was a very big change. Mm, mm -hmm. um, but I don't believe we were going to win an election until that issue was of competing parties was resolved um, and uh, it's been pretty effectively resolved. And an interesting situation now with the, with the situation with uh, with Campbell Newman um, running for the for the position of Premier mm. while not being a sitting member. Uh, it's certainly thinking outside the square. Well, it is. It's probably not that unusual uh, concept. Uh, I mean, he ran for Lord Mayor of Brisbane and, and wasn't a councillor. Well, that's what I actually uh, said to Campbell when he was here on the program. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty similar situation. Yeah, that's right. And, and I mean, that is, in fact, uh, and, I mean, the Brisbane City Council is bigger than some of the states of Australia. Yeah. Uh, and yet, you know, that's the standard thing. Labor are running a Lord Mayor for Brisbane who's never been a councillor. Yeah. Um, so the thing with Campbell is, of course, he's got the track record. He's yeah. not an unknown quantity. Yeah. Uh, they know exactly where he's coming from, who he is, uh, and the sorts of things that, that he can do. So um, people want a clear-cut choice. They don't, they don't want a complex, if maybe, sort of choice. They want a choice between the two leaders and the two parties. Uh, and that's, that's what they've got. And, uh, you know, I think that's what people would choose to have. We don't have an election date. Can't be too far away. Mm. Is there a lot of confidence in the ranks? Look... I think uh, the indications are that uh, that we're doing much better than we have done prior to any of the previous elections. Yes. I wouldn't get carried away in the sense that we need to pick up 13 or more seats. Uh, that's something that's almost never happened in mm. Queensland history. Um, getting a swing across the state is one thing, uh, but as we know from experience, frequently those swings happen in seats that have already got big margins one way or the other and it doesn't change who holds the seat. Uh, you've actually got to pull across those marginal seats uh, if you're going to change the government. So we don't want to be complacent about it um, at all. Certainly polls would suggest that we're faring better than we have prior to previous elections, mm -hmm. uh, but it's still actually a pretty pretty big job. And I, you know, I, when I talk to people, I caution them, uh, you know, not to think that this is going to happen like it did in New South Wales. Mm. Um, there are a lot of marginal seats, and Queensland's quite a different state. It's a very decentralised state. Mm. Um, there's no guarantee that what happens in, in Brisbane is the same that uh, happens in Cairns and Townsville or in the other regional centres of the state. So yeah. we've got to do the hard work ahead of us. And politics has a way of making people look silly when they think they know what's going to happen. Yes. Yeah. I think the worst thing you can ever do in politics is uh, is, is become overconfident. Yeah. Uh, and pl plenty of uh, train wrecks have followed from that. And without even asking you, I can imagine you're probably out of bed by about 5.30, quarter to six and getting home at about 10, 10.30. How do you find time away from the busy life of politics for Bruce Flegg? You've got four sons. Mm. And do you find the time outside of public life to find some Bruce Flegg time? What do you do? Uh, those hours are about right. Yeah. Uh, and it's a seven-day-a-week job yeah. because uh, we look after an electorate as well as 
um, looking after a portfolio. You've got to make yourself available sometime, don't you? Um, that's right. Yeah. Uh, to some extent in, in this job, your family life is impacted. Um, you know, my, my sons are older. I, I would hate to think of doing this job with, with a young family. Mm. Um, but uh, you've got to try to make some time for them. Essentially, the commitments that you have, some of them are things that are just obligations and you need to be there and for those occasions your family unfortunately comes second. Um, where you do have some discretion, you try to put in time uh, for your family and you try to make it quality time as well. Uh, you know, I think we're all very, very conscious of the fact that Time is so valuable when mm. you have so little of it. Mm. You don't mess around with it when you've got it available to you. No, right? that's right. Yeah. And and so you tend to get out and do things um, or you tend to get away for a few days, away from the telephone, the email. Now, I'm not sure that email was a step forward when you look, <laughs> look at the number of them that to keep pouring in every day. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm saying, Bruce, take the weekend off. What are you going to do? Um, I know that it's probably unlikely that you would have the weekend off, so yes, it's probably not a situation. Yes, I didn't have the weekend off, but um, if if it occurs that I have a weekend off, then I try to get away. So mm. I, I like to go to Point Lookout on Stradbroke oh, yeah, Island nice. uh, or sometimes Sunshine Coast. Um, so you might take whichever kids are at home or whatever and just get away for a day or two, even just overnight, can make... You know, you feel very much more refreshed. Yeah, yeah. What about health and fitness? I know you're a keen cyclist. Yeah, people are used to watching politicians gain weight and go grey, yeah. and uh, it's it happens uh, unfortunately to all of us. It's very, very important. We've just seen and Paul Lucas to... basically announce his retirement because he wants to pay and spend more time looking after his health. Yes, right. And uh, I've I've run into several of the recently retired state MPs. You know. At least two of them I can think of lost over 20 kilos in the first six to nine months after retirement. Is that right? Um, looking after your health is very, very important and that it has to become a priority. Not everyone can do a Tony Abbott or getting up at 4.30 in the morning and running and cycling and swimming every morning. Yeah. Um, but it is important. Uh, so my exercise of choice is cycling, um, as it is increasingly for, for men of my age group. Mm. And it, it's been a wonderful activity for both keeping me fit keeping me mentally alert and making great friends because uh, two generations ago, men would go to the pub and have a beer after work for a bit of male company. Yep. Increasingly, uh, particularly middle-aged men, hop on their bike, terrorise a few motorists on the street and then stop for a coffee at Park Road. Yeah, swap the pots after work for a couple of flat whites before work. That's right. Very yes. much so. <laughs> Bruce, it's been a, a, a real pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for your time. Pleasure. You've been watching Meet the Ministers. My name is Sean Bindley. And I'll join you again next week.